Hi, good evening. I'm Baby Nebrida, and welcome to our premiere episode of Heart to Heart Talk. This spiritual talk show ran for more than six years and it rested for a while since we devoted our time doing film evangelization. Now that we are in the midst of the pandemic, Brother Ben Yalung and his ETVN group have graciously accepted our offer to help us produce and continue telecasting an interesting, informative, intriguing, and quite inspirational, no? So uh, we're very blessed because we have here our co-host, none other than Mr. Rick Saludo, who will accompany us on our weekly spiritual program here on YouTube. So tonight we have also a distinguished guest, very familiar to most of us. Please welcome Reverend Father Francis Gostillo, who is very, very generous enough to give us his time in sharing his gifts of talent and wisdom, especially now that we're going to talk about the two columns of faith, the Eucharistic Jesus and the Blessed Mother. We shall give you a spiritual inventory on how God sees the world right now, okay? So stay with us for an inspirational hour in these uncertain times. Our insightful discussion might just make us renew our Catholic belief and that we can also rehash our faith, hope, and charity, all these virtues. So let's start now. Uh, I would ask the Rick here to introduce himself. <laughs> you know, since uh, we've been doing um, heart to heart talk, and now you'll be our regular co-host. Well, thank you, thank you, baby, for inviting me to co-host uh, the show with you. Uh, I, my own involvement in faith uh, has been since I would say the time I was in Hong Kong. I was there for Asia Week magazine for 17 years. And I got introduced to, to the liturgy in the church uh, as a reader um, and got training in uh, lecturing. So that was, that was helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when I came back to the Philippines to join the Arroyo administration in 2001, I continued at San Juan uh, Church, uh, Pinaglamanan, uh, as one of their lectors for over 10 years. Uh, then eventually transferred to Santuario de San Jose in Green Hills. Uh, where I did both uh, lecturing as well as uh, good. Eucharistic minister. You know, you're so active in government, and who would think that you'd be, you know, <laughs> God-centered, well, Actually, right? what uh, inspired me is uh, the former finance secretary and eventually, I think, chief executive of Hong Kong, mm. um, uh, the, who was actually lecturing in the church that I went to in Hong Kong, St. Joseph Church. So anyway, let's introduce... Yeah, no, well, so that's kind of my, my uh, background, apart from my work in the government. When I plus was, you uh, being a, a journalist, yes, you have a weekly and, uh, column in the Manila have, Times. I do have a column in the Manila Times, yeah. and I invite our viewers to check it out online, manilatimes.net. I have a religious column every Thursday. Every Thursday, my column is on religion. And uh, the Sunday column, which... Uh, it is on public affairs. Mm -hmm. They used to be the other way around, but I decided I'll put the religion on Thursday, get more attention from the, you know, the public that goes to work, and then at the same time give a reflection several days ahead of the Sunday yeah. uh, mass Well, meetings. I would like to yeah. thank you because you mention our projects every now and then, you know. I'm happy to do that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's that, I would have to say, there's not enough attention to our Lord and, uh, and, uh, and the faith. And actually, later on, we'll see that that's actually part of the problem <laughs> that uh, we are facing in this pandemic. Okay. Now, let me, before anything else, of course, I'd like to introduce uh, and thank our very distinguished guest, the president of the Don Bosco School of Theology, who is with us today, and who was also, uh, in the 1990s, I believe, uh, the provincial in the Philippines wow. of the Salesians. <laughs> That's why everybody knows him. Absolutely. Oh, oh. Uh, and of course, very engaging in yeah. his uh, events. Uh, he himself uh, finished his um, licentiate and doctoral studies in Rome at the Salesian uh, University there. So uh, may I again thank and, in and uh, introduce Father Francis Gustillo. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Father. inviting me, Rick, and I'm so happy to see you and uh, be in your program, baby. Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, it's a very simple uh, curriculum vitae. <laughs> I've been lecturing since 38 years ago, practically a similar subject matter. Uh, first in our school of theology that started in 83, but then um, uh, certain other seminaries 
wanted also my services like San Carlos uh-huh. in uh, Ma- in Makati and then Archbishop Soc Villegas uh-huh. sought me and since he began his school of theology in Palapad okay. San Fabian uh, Pangasinan mm-hmm. I would travel at 3 o'clock in the morning oh. to be there at 6.30 oh for the gosh. mass mm-hmm. and That's lecture at 8.30 uh-huh. and uh, the whole day and then I would sleep hard and fast so that I could again lecture the next morning uh-huh. and practically I've been doing this, this since 2013 the pandemic um, made me do it online and uh, then the last uh, seminary I'm going was is uh, Divine Word Seminary uh-huh. in, uh, in, Tagaytay. in Tagaytay yes yes so the pandemic allowed me that in the same subject matter I had four seminaries mm-hmm. online about 139 so they're all together for the class the same subject yeah, matter. excellent yeah. Yeah. I was so happy but the hard part is how to correct their papers <laughs> <laughs> they suddenly have 100 papers arriving at the same time yeah so it's part of my life is to be a professor of uh-huh. theology and you enjoy what you're doing yes so much although there was a time I was four years in publishing uh-huh. uh, for our Salesiana Publishers, now we call them Bosco Press. And one year in Amici Restaurant. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You used, which, you used to go which, there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's, there, 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 it's actually, I think, privatized. It, it was sold yeah. to it a group. That, to but the, they've, they've done it, it very well. It was one of your priests, no? Who, Father yes. Colombo began it. <laughs> and then I was, I was called back by my superior. You know, after my stint as provincial, you have to be exiled somewhere. So oh, yeah. they sent me to Jerusalem. <laughs> and I thought I would be staying there for some time. But uh-huh. then my successor, who is a very good classmate and very good friend, he told me, no, you come back because you better finish that restaurant. It's not our competence. <laughs> and good enough, it was... It turned out to be a huge success. Uh-huh. Uh, now it's the Morans. The oh, family. yes. Uh-huh. Le Ricci. Le Ricci de... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. But we still uh, go to Amici, no? but before we had to drive all the way there. Oh yeah, there's only one, oh, uh, oh, one oh. Uh, the original. branch. Original. No, there's not even a branch, the original. Grab it, their margarita is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's where I am. Uh, well, you, you mentioned, Father, the, uh, the pandemic. And of course, if we all had to make adjustments, uh, not as hard as it is for others. And uh, I think for a lot of people in the world, uh, including many perhaps who are watching us now, it was a really, really difficult time and All challenging. Of us. It yeah. was like a big shock, you know. Uh, two years ago, that was March, I think, yeah. diba? And then, parang. All the plans of everybody, yeah. they all like, you know, caved in. Yeah. And, you know, people lost their jobs and everything, diba? So it was... Uh, but when you look back right now, the knee-jerk reaction of people was uh, to hoard toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> See? I remember that. No, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. I remember that. And recently, the knee-jerk was to hoard paracetamol. Mm-hmm. And so when you say the pandemic, I think we worsened we worsened it with hoarding. We we get to feel panicky all the time, especially well, housewives, hoarding, right? Yeah, hoarding is probably an expression of losing control, and your idea of keeping control is having something that you think you will need, uh, even if you might actually not need it. Uh, and so it's toilet paper at one time or. Or uh, bottles of water, you know, b- b- bottles of water, alcohol. Alcohol. It, oh, it could be anything else. A- alcohol and was like parang out of stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and and it's like it, it might run out, and it does run out bec- simply because of hoarding. It's not because you know you suddenly you know the plants that are making alcohol stop. Um, but but uh, uh, really, when when you feel you. There is no power that is taking care of you. You feel you have to hoard. That's to me is part of it. You know? the, and the concern was the, how the, long will this last? You know. Yeah. And then I would say, oh, it's just mga two months lang yan <laughs> I was thinking of that. It's now two years. Yeah, yeah. imagine that. With, then, uh, with probably a few uh, more months to go at least. No, uh, but the shocking yeah. part was when the church closed. 
you know, and we were missing the actual real presence of the Eucharist. You know. Right. That was really uh, a big blow. You know, right. Big blow. Was, uh, when you don't have mass, uh, not only the, the biggest loss, of course, is the body and blood of Christ, but there's also the loss of being with people and knowing that uh, you know the same people that you see week in week out are still there. Uh, yeah, you, you know. miss the family, yeah, your there's children the connection, playing around. Those connections you know. suddenly are severed. The children got lost. Yeah, yeah. You know, they stayed in the. Uh, and you just hear about it on uh -huh. Facebook that so many people, are, you know, friends, relatives Pass are passing Pass away. Like uh, every week, you hear about five and, people. Uh, uh, that 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 weighs on people without the concomitant support of, of uh, a church community, uh, a, a prayer life, especially if the prayer life wanes. And it could, that, that was happening a lot. Uh, uh, not to mention the fact that some people probably didn't have much of it in the first place. And, and this is really, uh, I'd, I'd like to think, one of the key points we, you know, we need to face uh, and discuss in this program how how the pandemic has just thrown things out of whack, and a big part, but a big impact of that is the hopelessness, the yes. the confusion uh, that has uh, pervaded a lot of a lot of people. Um, maybe some of the people, or many of the people that are watching us now. Um, but you know, but, Father, I really felt so so bad, especially the government did not consider. Uh, our spiritual life, you know, parang we go in governance, you should not exclude prayers. And I think the church, the factor, the church, and the way they close the church, and uh, it was really a big blow, you know, parang we were missing the Holy Eucharist, we were missing the Mass. So we got so used to now going to online Masses. The sad part is, Bakal the people will be lazy now to go to the, to the mm -hmm. church, you know. That's so, one point. But I'm quite happy, at least definitely with one parish priest of ours in uh, Kalampa. We call it Mayapa. You know, he has an open van. Okay. And he goes barrio per barrio. I think he's got 18 barrios. He celebrates the Mass with social distancing okay. uh, on top of the open van and celebrates the Mass mm -hmm. uh, week per after barrio? week. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he would move through the bars, maybe you would not get him the whole time in one month, but definitely you have the Eucharist at least once a month. Yes, yes. That would be nice to interview the priest. Yeah. I would like to interview him. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, it really demanded from us, the clergy, to be inventive and creative. Yes. Because I, I think, how do you sustain the faith of the people? And as you said, regarding the Eucharist particularly, ah, I'm celebrating Mass since the pandemic, personally, because I'm a priest, I can celebrate it any time. Yes. But I was shocked that because in our community of Don Bosco, we don't only have priests, we have lay brothers like oh. Lasalle brothers. And just about a week ago, he shared with us, during the Feast of St. John Bosco in January 31, said, you know, you priests, you can say Mass any time. Me, I have to wake up. Because I will not receive that communion if I could not go to the Mass yes. of the community. And so I don't have the leeway, like some of you, that maybe you say, oh, I'm, I want to sleep more. I'll just celebrate Mass on my own. That's very true. That people hungered and really were thirsty for Christ in the Eucharist. It Self, also uh, improves yeah. the connectivity no, to our God because, uh, okay, I was like um, a regular viewer of EWTN and aside from the Mass, they also have the Rosary there and then they talk about the faith and then you would listen to a lot of witnessing and so I, I think it improved, it improved my spirituality, you know, it deepened my spirituality. Well, of course, of course, we are afraid of what's going to happen. You know, I keep praying for family members. People are calling me up, pray for me and all that. But the thing is, though I live right across the church, you know, I chose that place because 
of the convenience of going to church every day. But our parish priest uh, didn't want us to go to church and even got a call because he said that I'm senior citizen and I'm not supposed to get out, you know, to leave. But I said, if I can go to the mall, to the grocery to, for my food, why can't I go to church for my soul, for my spiritual life? But, you know, I did not argue anymore. You know, that she's being very obedient, you know, so I'm saying it was really a, a challenge, a struggle. Not, even to go to church. So we, we were allowed to visit, private visit for a private prayer. You know. yeah, but you go, okay, ka, Yeah, well, I, I'm very fortunate. Uh, we had a Don Bosco church nearby from where I moved to uh, during the pandemic, which was in Santa Rosa, Laguna. So that's, that was convenient. And that's it's nice. a big enough church so that they could keep it open during the week. And there, the number of people going there would not fill it up. So one could go there anytime. And I, I have to say, there were times when there would be lockdowns where the, the church would be, for, would be forced uh, to close under regulations. And it really felt a loss not to be able to receive the Eucharist. Uh, and that was, that was our. But, but then, you know, I think when it does open, then there's actually a great anticipation and, and joy. Yes. But looking at the pandemic, yeah. um, I think if God can be met through His Son in the Eucharist, I think we also met Him in the family yeah. that could not move out. <laughs> and yes. we have to look into our relationships. I think God made it also that way possible that we look at each other hard enough and realize that you know family where two or three are gathered yes. in my name I am there in the midst you know what I did was I called up my superior because I was at home uh, on that Saturday when I heard that Monday they will close down everything yeah. so I called up my superior and said uh, can I can I go back and get some clothes because I'm going to lock myself down with my brother's family? Why? Well, my brother goes to Mass every day. And I said, we are seven priests. And what's the use of having all of us seven in one Mass right. when I could be at least in the family of yeah. my brother? Oh, okay. And he goes to Mass every day. Yeah. And many times his wife was with him. To my surprise, uh, my brother says, can we air this mass to some of our friends, friends. Mm -hmm. and we did with a Zoom. simple gadget of yeah. my nephew okay. and my nephew started to read for the mass the, the reading and never stopped for at least maybe 18 months wow he's so been blessed. reading every day <laughs> they're that so blessed he never did oh. I, I he goes to mass on sunday but he went to mass every day but as I said I started seeing them praying the rosary at night because I said I'm praying the rosary would anyone like to join me the dad says come on let's have the rosary yeah. and let's yeah. have intentions for the rosary yeah. and perfect. since they were five uh, I said you each one of you you pray one mystery and you know we enjoy it yeah. okay and then then we realized that uh, there's not too many things that are essential, you know. And my sister-in-law started to say that, what will I do? I'm, I'm locked down here. I can go to the business. Started to cook. Finally, the children <laughs> had a mother cooking for them. Whereas before, no. And now, so the family life, for those who believe that they could meet God in their family, there is God. And now, that has become cl clarified or clearer. You know, I take care of our relationships. Because, example, you chose that I would come to the program. No? Okay. But I never chose my dad. I never chose my brother. <laughs> so who chose us to be together if not God? Definitely. Yeah. So why not appreciate this, this bond among us? It's an opportunity. Yes. And then I realized, as a priest, I could work on the Word of God. 
That's the plus factor, actually. Again, the Bible yeah. is where oh. God okay. can be found. Not necessarily only prayer, but listening, meditating on the Word of God. Yeah. So before I was having a Bible study in a house, and we were 30. Now we're over 90 because it went on Zoom yeah. and on Facebook. And Are you still doing it, Father? Every Wednesday. Okay, I'd like to join. Liturgical Bible <laughs> study. <laughs> it, it sounds funny, but it's so elementary. It somebody so. reads, somebody asks a question, and the answer is the text. <laughs> because you deepen on the text, and then Ibabangana, we will put together the two texts of the old and the new, and then you'll find out, ah, that's the Word of God. We are not allowing ourselves to say, like Lecture Divina, this is the word that touched me. No, no, no. What is the common word of God in the two? Like example, today is a Sunday, no? And we had this Isaiah who got jolted because he was used to have this angel, seraphim, on top of that uh, Ark of the Covenant, and he would worship. All of a sudden, they started flying and starts to smoke and starts, the, the door was, was rumbling. And he said, oh my God, I met God, I met God, woe to me, I'm a sinner. And then, what did Simon realize? He was always fishing, but that night he caught nothing. And then all of a sudden, Jesus challenges him to go to the deep. He gets a lot of fish and says, oh my God, my God, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a sinful man. So what's the story? Well, God said, and, and I said, it is my homily, God doesn't look for suitability. He asks for availability. And that's, that's my, my two-liner for today's homily. Mm -hmm. And since I stopped the daily mass, so I did a saglit tanpo, a one-minute gospel. Every Sunday, every Saturday evening, I come out with a one minute gospel and i think it's getting into the fire that people are saying and so one priest told me can you put it earlier i said why <laughs> well it's nice to hear and yeah and like and to, to refer to my yeah, yeah. to my hobby yeah okay fine that's so nice father the word of god because yes the word of god that's very important because uh People are not so conscious of it because they're just living for this world, most of them. So they're not thinking of that we are, you know, body and soul, and that we're not putting emphasis on our spiritual life, no. But you know, going back to the catechism, we were created to know, to love, to serve God, and at the same time, our God would like us all to enjoy heaven because He really prepared that for us as children of God. No? So the Word of God is the best way to learn, to know God. And it was really the gospel of Jesus who really gave his time and uh, sacrifice for, just for our world, our, our humanity, to know God. And, and we shouldn't miss that opportunity. That's why, Father, I get so uh, disturbed when we go to Mass and then we hear the priest giving a lot of jokes, you know, and not focusing so much on on uh, insights, the word, the word of God, the insights, and so the you there. And yes. So, and my children, they always complain to me that we have enough entertainment, you know. We want to learn, we want to hear, you know, and they're looking forward to the thing. And, you know, sometimes we'll ask, so sabi ko, well, let's just pray for that priest so that you will know better, you know, so. Well, I, from what you, you, you have shared, father and, and baby, really, at this time, the, the, both the Word of God and just coming together in worship and prayer can be so transformative and also supportive. Uh, and, and that's really the thing that perhaps uh, more people can do uh, so that the challenges and difficulties and, and even the, the, the unsettling uh, time that we are in would be clarified, would be supported. Father, I'd like to you ask know, I, you, I, and, and also yeah. Rick, I'd like to ask both of you, because we'd, we'd like to uh, figure out or study why our God allowed this to happen, you know, with all the sufferings and the deaths, you know, but I know that 
the de death is not considered a punishment to God. You know, it's just a passageway. But the point is, there must be a reason if you consider where the world is right now and where we are right now. Why God allowed this to happen at this particular time, you know, in our lives, you know. So there must be an, an analysis. I'm sure, Father, you, you've thought of that. <laughs> or you've been asked about it also <laughs> as well, yeah. Well, <clears throat> there are two things that we have to consider here. Is the pandemic a problem? Or as you're asking now, is it a mystery? If it is a problem, it's man-made. There is a solution. And as you said, the pandemic created no toilet paper. <laughs> it's a human problem. Or no paracetamol. Or the vaccines are being kind of maybe used one day for election purposes, <laughs> as some people said. Mm -mm. Diba? And now, there's the whole question about vax or that vax. Yeah. Diba? So it will not be used for election anymore. So if it is a problem, there is a solution, and the solution is human. If it is a mystery, and death is a mystery, then there's no solution. There's only to accept the mystery. As they said, accept mystery, forego mastery. So the, the question of baby, uh, where, where is God in this pandemic? It's really the question of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. It's even the question of Jesus on the cross. It depends on which gospel, though. <laughs> <laughs> John or... Because if it is Mark and Matthew, he said those words of Psalm 22. But they say, if you go now, as you are doing it with me, Father Winston Lee, in the Gospel of Luke, just last Saturday, the prayer was Psalm 31. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. First word. And last word, seventh. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So from the first hour, let's call it 12 noon, until 3 o'clock, Jesus was just praying to the Father. To the point that it seems the Father is not doing anything. And in the end, He says, Okay, let, let your will be done. This will end my life on earth. But you see, something happened. When the group of the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, incited the crowd, If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And then closer, because there is a cordon sanitaire of soldiers, Romans, Gentiles that they call. They said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself, come on. Show us your might. And then there's even somebody much closer, <laughs> the thief, that says, come on, if you're the Christ, save yourself, don't forget us. If he were Batangenyo, he would say, alay <laughs> nakapakwe. The question of incarnation is very serious as a mystery. If God became man, He shares our inadequacy and therefore shares our suffering, even our death. But is death the conclusion? That's where the pandemic becomes frustrating. You think that dying is the end. But it's but not. It's but that's not. what we have to tell of you and remind our brothers and sisters that this is not the end. It's not the end. Because it's the beginning of the next. Because what happened after the breathing of Christ in his last? Well, before that, he already heard one thief, the other one, <laughs> who said, remember me when you go to your kingdom. Mm. The centurion. Right. Sorry, the centurion. He's a centurion of a century. A hundred soldiers says, my goodness, this is the son of God. And the people started going away, mm. beating their breast. Was there a transformation? Yes. And what was the transformation? Not 100% though. No problem. Mm -hmm. But the transformation is yes. that people started to know God yeah. as Lord and Savior. I, I think that's actually a very good point to relate to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the point of the pandemic? It's a mystery. It's something that challenges us. Like so many things in the world challenge us. Mm -hmm. And in facing this challenge, do we believe? 
or do we lose hope? I mean, that's a, that's, that's the kind of the choice anyway. that we encounter. Yes. You can either, like Christ, call out to God and say, Lord, into your hands, I commend my situation. Or you, those, yeah. or you say, there is, some people would say there's no God. It is all just, you know, no, suffering on the, on in this the world. Other, on the other hand, a lot of people would say, we surrender everything, you know, Lord, yeah. bahala ka na. Because yeah. dasal na lang, everybody's saying yeah. that, dasal na lang tayo, you know. But the thing is, we still have to figure out, why did God the Father choose this particular era? You know, is it because of the sinfulness of man, sobra na? Or, I don't know, because Our Lady has been warning us, diba? Our Lady has been warning I, us about I, the I, period of trials and tribulations. Well, I guess on my end, God is kind of way above my pay scale. <laughs> I'm trying to figure him out. But I, all I know is that certainly there are people being led to him by the terrible events. There are also people going apart from him. That's happened to... Aside from that, we uh, yeah. have that typhoon. You know, with yeah. all of the difficulties that we have, and really a another, another sort of like a warning or a reminder to us that we have to take care of our needy, our sisters. Yes. yes. So we not just have to think of ourselves. Everything is me, okay. my family. You know. So we have to open and reach out to others. That's part of the challenge. You know, the challenge is not. It's not just. What does this all mean and, you know, how do I get through this? But also reaching out to others and doing what we can for uh, each other. You know? I, I hope that we have recognized that the logistical um, personnel, the frontliners that always we said were nurses and doctors, the real frontliners now are grub and speedy and yeah, la la You don't get your food without them yeah. if you're locked down. And yet these people have to... And it, interestingly, it's not about motor bicycles that are so many now. You know, we just went out and you coming here from, from Paranaque. And when you look at the EDSA kanina, at the EDSA, you have always a grab or a lalabu, an orange or a green, you know? And it's all, all over, right? And they are the ones. But in Paranaque, you would find a grab and a bicycle. You know, that means this man cannot even afford a motorcycle, but he wants to live for himself, no, for his family. Yeah. Now, if we are not yet aware of that, my goodness, we are still blind. Yeah. And I think if you would like to ask me, what is the mystery of this? God says, my goodness, in this kind of hoarding and thinking of yourself, have you ever realized I'm also there in the poor? You know, one segment... That's his fr the friends of Christ, you know, the right? homeless, the poor. Mm. And you know, Father, I, I really am so touched by the grab and the lala move no? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a situation we were eating during chinese new year meeting at chinese restaurant and there were a lot of grab uh, drivers waiting you know I can witness everybody eating it's so insensitive and, you know here you are eating and then they're waiting for the mga take out no from people and i said why do they let them inside the restaurant and become so awkward you know so, kawawa naman sila. So, they should at least give them a, a room, a place to, to wait without having that kind of awkwardness. And then, also put emphasis on giving them good tips. Yes. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, some people, they just, just give the exact amount, you know. But these people are, they need every, every yeah. peso. Every peso, you know. So, I think that's, uh, if ever this has happened, it, has, it is happening. I think we have lost an awareness of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And so the absence of things, the absence of activity and business brought about the presence of who we think is always absent. Yeah. I think it is a reversal. Mm -mm. I think there is uh, a theology in theology, there is a plot of reversal. Okay. The rich become uh, poor 
those exalted go down. Those below uh, are the, exalted. The reading from Isaiah that right. our Lord said is fulfilled in your hearing. Yes. <laughs> well, the equality too. You know, it doesn't choose anybody. You know, when you get hit and you're hospitalized, even if you're a billionaire, you know. Yes, in fact, uh, yeah, that's the thing that. about the mm -hmm. pandemic. We've, got, we've had crisis, economic crisis, uh, terrible disasters. The pandemic is the one that just swept the whole world. And billionaires as well as paupers, they all feared for their lives. You had very wealthy people who were killed, who died from uh, COVID. Some, some yeah. the entire family. And so some the entire family. It, that really drives home the message. We are not in charge. We are not in control. We, we have to look to a higher power to get through this. Even the availability yeah. of the hospital rooms. You know? and, so even and, how rich you are, yeah. you, you have to choose. You and know? when the vaccines came up, people thought, oh, okay, we've solved this. No, you no. didn't. No. <laughs> because it, there, were ba there were millions of ba breakthrough infections. And just when the Western world were ready to open up everything and they had booked thousands of flights to travel during Christmas, Omicron came in and shut the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really, the, the point is put across that and perhaps this is one thing we can say about why it happened at this time. At this time, the world is so interconnected. Whatever happens in some other in, in Timbuktu is known to everybody else. Within minutes. So we then really have a sense of what's of the of how helpless everyone is. In the past, you, you could feel so bad in some disaster in some corner of the world. Mm -hmm. the rest of the world didn't know about it. Now, everybody's so connected. So this is a time when when you might say the gospel is being preached all over the world because what happens in one place is communicated to the rest of the world and everybody has to think about it. And at some point, the message of God gets through. And the adversary is becoming stronger because there are a lot of fake news. They distort facts, really. There are a lot well, of errors being yeah. thrown at us. Uh, I, so, Whatever, still, yeah. Yeah, whatever connects the whole world can also be used by those who yeah. want to spread the wrong kind of, of messages. A lot of fake news, <laughs> yeah. my father. That's very true. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, Jesus said it straight. I have conquered the world. Yeah. Uh, there is no, no way that we should be afraid of the evil one unless uh, you become a cohort and you are the evil one today. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is God rather telling us? You know, if 450 million have been aborted and there are only 7 billion people, one every 15 lives, one life every 15 has been aborted. And yet, God continues to have to give life to people. Now, one of our archbishops, who is an emeritus, our Italian, says, you know who got the brunt of the pandemic? Europe and the United States. Because I, he said, I've been in Papua. We had seven deaths in these past two years. Seven. Yeah. Africa, we don't hear of death in Africa. Maybe South Africa, because it is very developed, but even in Asia, the death is not as huge as what happened in Europe, yes. especially Bergamo, as they call it, Bergamo, no? that, that place, where there were even military trucks to bring the, the dead yes. to uh, an open pit. Now, he was telling me as an Italian, I think we who are in the West, who got used to be so sure and so much in control, we even think we could control the whole world. How come the pandemic hit us very strongly? It tilted the balance that, where is now the population? Africa and Asia. And when you do it in terms of business, that's called market economy. <laughs> it's also the productivity of a young labor force 
being Precisely. able, you know, instead of an aging one that has to depend on a smaller, uh, young working age population. Actually, so, yeah. we, we haven't really solved a serious problem about the divisiveness of people on the choices that they made, whether they want to be vaccine or being unvaccinated, you know. Uh, for us Marians, you know, and um, we have this message of Our Lady, you know, through Father Gobi. I think that's message 99. She says that I am the only vaccine. And she said that to Father Gobi, 1977. Hmm? I am the only vaccine, my, the consecration to my Immaculate Heart. So anyway, so a lot of them are not vaccine because of Our Lady's statement. But some of us are not vaccine because of our health conditions, you know. But those people who are forcing other people to be vaccine, I, I think they should think twice because, you know, it's not so good because you, you cannot really force the choice of people, right, Father? Well, the Holy Father came quite early to say that of course, the data was that at that time, if you get vaccinated, you will no longer be to transmit. You cannot transmit anymore. Uh, not only that you won't get infected strongly, but you will not be a carrier. carrier. But now it's the same. So at that time, in the data of the Holy Father, he made that, that announcement. It is a moral good to be, to be vaccinated. vaccinated. But now... I think he has to review. Yeah. But because he did not say this, ex cathedra he says, I believe, that's the word, yeah. I believe that it is ethical for a person to be vaccinated so that he would not spread more this, this uh, variant of Delta or whatever, of the COVID. But um, now... I think there is no advantage, Father, whether you're vaccinated or well, the, not, you're exposed the, to the, the same thing. Just on the medical side of it, uh, certainly there are breakthrough infections, and they found that out in Britain and the United States. In Israel, too. When they loosened up thinking that uh, they've reached uh, herd immunity, and then, of course, Omicron broke loose. Um, the other side that I think uh, could have been given more attention and effort and funds is the development of medication. They went very, you know, very fast on vaccines. I think they should have also moved as fast on medication. Now we've got uh, medication that will lower the risk of serious or, uh, or fatal illness by 89%. That's better than most vaccines. And you only give it to those who actually get sick. You don't have to give it to everyone. So when somebody manifests mild symptoms, give him the shot, and it uh, would spare him nine, nine out of 10 times. So those things are now helping to review uh, the perspective on vaccines. You know, I was telling you, Rick, that I wanted really for the government to give out vitamins, you know, to strengthen the immunity of people. Yeah. We have the drug companies that we have, like uh, we really catered to them all these years, you know. We were buying from them and all, but it was their turn to do something for the people by donating vitamins, you know. And if everybody's given vitamins, like what we normally take, you know, I take like maybe 10 <laughs> pills a day, vitamins to strengthen my immunity. If we do that, maybe like, uh, subsidized by government you know so instead of pushing on the vaccine that's really totally strange to us we don't know the effects of it and all that so maybe you immunity not them the, but, the point i think yeah. as you are saying here uh, where god enters into the picture is that he's always been in the picture yeah. it's just that we are not aware yes, or exactly yeah. or we don't want to call him into the picture or do that don't we don't want to, to acknowledge his presence in the picture. As we have already said, one is the Eucharist in the church, but there is also, as you said, the prayer. Um, to me, praying is more than prayers in the sense that if a person really prays, he comes before God, whom he does not see. 
He gives time to someone real but is not tangible, not visible as the material world is. But more importantly is that when we come to prayer, we are who we are before God. Yeah. No more, no less. And no, no mask, <laughs> everything is open. And you know what will happen in prayer? There's only one thing He will tell you. I love you. You are my beloved. If we could only soak on that point, yeah. that God loves me, that is the greatest assurance of hope that he's, he's in charge of me. I cannot be in control of my life. But if somebody says to me, and he's the higher power that we call the creator of heaven, and, earth, and he says, I'm your father. I he's am in control. I'm your dad. Correct? No. Nice, nice. But you know what should be? If actually we humble ourselves, as we said in some of our songs of Heal Our Heal Land, songs. then the next thing we realize is that He puts me in charge of those that He says, help me yeah. to make other people recognize I am in charge. How? Show them my love. So don't hoard. Don't only think of yourself. Recognize that you, they are your brothers, your sisters. Call me father, but since I'm the only father of all of you, then please treat each other as yeah. brothers and sisters. But that's the gospel. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. For me, that's where God is here in the pandemic. Actually, it's really a, a test for each one of us. You know, Our character is how we share. It's, it's all about sharing. Because there are, this is really a big temptation to to be selfish. Gather, yeah. You know, well, to think of our family only and not go out. Think I, of the security guards and all that. During these times of trouble and uncertainties, we must face a total renewal of our faith, hoping to end this pandemic and to ask our God to restore us, to forgive us, to heal us, and for the Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. Let us not be afraid. Instead, as deep in our faith, and instill hope and love in our hearts to unite them to the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. It is only in this way to leave the consecration which you have made to Our Lady. With a deep devotion and dedication, our Immaculate Heart of Mary will attain its triumph. In the meantime, let us all be the apostles of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. As we continuously say, Fiat Voluntas Tua, yes to the divine plan, in the divine will of our Almighty Father. We thank Reverend Father Gustilo for sharing his time, wisdom, knowledge, and talent. Thank you to Mr. Rick Saludo for being a valuable part of the Revived Spiritual DV program. Thank you all for staying with us on this insightful hour of Heart to Heart Talk. See you next week as we bring you the wonderful topic of the three theological virtues more specifically on the forgotten virtue of hope. Good night and God bless everyone.